Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church here in Plainfield, Illinois, as we are celebrating this fourth Sunday of Advent. We hear of God sending the angel Gabriel to a young woman, Mary, who is being told that she is going to be with child from the Holy Spirit. I will admit, in the church here, this should actually be celebrated in March nine months before the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But it is a great preparation for us right before we celebrate Christmas to remember what it's all about, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Thou wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times didst give the law. In cloud and majesty and awe, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou branch of Jesse's tree. Them from Satan's tyranny that trust thy mighty power to save and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gabriel from heaven came with wings as drifted snow with eyes as flame all hail to thee O lowly maiden Mary most highly favored lady Gloria For no a blessed mother thou shalt be All generations laud and honor thee My son shall be Emmanuel by seers foretold most highly favored lady, Gloria. Then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head, To me be as it pleaseth God, she said. My soul shall laud and magnify God's holy name. 
most highly favored lady, Gloria. Of her Emmanuel the Christ was born, in Bethlehem all on a Christmas morn. And Christian folk throughout the world will ever say, Most highly favored lady, Gloria. God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We hear in our gospel reading the angel's announcement to Mary. We need to remember that Mary was a teenage girl probably at this time, too young to drive. She lived in Nazareth, a much forgettable town in far away Galilee. We know almost nothing about her prior to this conversation with the angel. She was a daughter of the covenant, a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But her people in those days were nothing to write home about. The glory of David and Solomon were a distant memory. It was likely she lived in poverty and simplicity. To this otherwise insignificant peasant girl came the angel Gabriel. We don't know much about him either. Besides Luke 1, his name is only mentioned once and that was in Daniel chapters 8 and 9. For angels, however, that is not bad. Only two angels are named in the entire scripture. Gabriel means man or mighty one of God. He stands in the presence of God, and his presence inspires the fear of man. Here is how the conversation went. Mighty Gabriel came to young Mary and said, Greetings, literally, rejoice, O favored one, the Lord is with you. This was a strange way to begin a conversation. Luke tells us that Mary was troubled by it. Maybe it bothered her that some stranger knew her name. Let's pick it up from Luke chapter 1, verse 30. And the angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. You can almost hear the excitement of Gabriel's voice. This was a big deal. The king had been promised for a millennium. Let's hear it from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Things into which angels long to look. Yes, the angels were really expecting this announcement to be made and for the event to occur. But Mary did not seem thrilled. Her response with an understandable question, Luke chapter 1, verse 34, How will this be, since I am a virgin? How will this be, since I am a virgin? Gabriel answers that in verse 35. Gabriel answers her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Gabriel concludes with an understatement. Verse 37, For nothing will be impossible with God. Literally, Gabriel said no word from God is beyond reality. Without question about her fiancé, or her wedding, or her reputation, Luke tells us Mary believed. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. 
and the angel departed from her. One of the ancient church fathers, Bernard of Clairvaux, writes that in Mary's life at this time, there were three miracles. Number one, she was a virgin, and yet she gave birth. Number two, the baby she bore also was God. And number three, she trusted the angel's message. Luther, Luther, in describing and discussing these three miracles, says, He called the virgin birth a mere trifle for God. He considered Jesus' birth, both man and God, a bigger deal. But most amazing, says Luther, is how Mary believed the word Gabriel spoke to her. The believing is the hardest part. Sometimes it's hard for us to believe that God is actually with us. Sometimes it's hard for us to believe that God actually cares for us. We hear his promise of forgiveness and life, but that is also sometimes hard to believe, which is why we need to focus into Gabriel's description of Mary as the favored one. What made Mary favored was not her family line, nor her personal achievements, nor her pure heart. She was favored by God for one reason. God chose her. In Ephesians chapter 1, St. Paul describes Christianity as highly favored. He says God chose us to be his sons and daughters out of nothing but his favor. In the end, we are not that different from Mary. By human standards, we are insignificant. We have done nothing to justify God coming to us. Actually, just the opposite. Because of our sins and rebellions, God is justified to toss us into the depths of eternal hell. But God shows us. God had favor for us. He has come to us as well. Welcome to Christmas. As we see the Christ child, our Savior, being born of Mary, a favored one, and we also then realize, because of God's grace, we also are favored ones. God's gift to us through holy baptism still remains. God puts his name upon us and calls us his dearly owned children. Again, this is not by anything we have done, not by our family background, not by how much money we have, not because we have a pure heart. It's all because God has chosen us. You are a favored one. And now, like Mary, we need to believe and trust that God has grace and mercy upon us, that God forgives us, that we are not alone, and that God does indeed care for us. I will admit, for Mary, that was the greatest challenge. And for us, it is also the greatest challenge. As the angel Gabriel said, for nothing is impossible with God. So we come before our Lord and Savior today. We hear his words and promises, and we believe and trust those promises, because those promises of God are true. So hear the words that Gabriel, the mighty one of God, speaks for you. Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. In his holy name, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Most High, you have favored us in the incarnation of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary. In everything, let it be to us according to your word. Give us faith to believe that nothing is impossible with you, and so to bold pray boldly like childlike confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, you have revealed in Christ Jesus the mystery kept secret for long ages. Now make known to all nations through the prophetic and apostolic scriptures. According to your eternal command, give us faithful preachers of your gospel to bring about the obedience of faith. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Alan, our district president, Rod, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Strengthen your holy church in every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, hear our prayers on behalf of our nation, its president, all legislators and judges, and those newly elected to serve. Preserve their lives and guide their action for the good of our people. Give peace among the nations of the earth, and preserve us from pestilence and famine, war and bloodshed, sedition, rebellion, and every evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings. Look with compassion on the lonely, the depressed, and the despairing. Grant healing to the sick, and give peace to the anxious and dying, especially we pray for Andy, Dave, Brett, Karen, Tony, Sandy, Bruce, Joe, Luann, Vern, Pat, Freddie, Tom, Jean, Pete, Brian, Kayla, Ken, Kathy, Kelly, Jeff, Kim and Joey, AJ, Erica, Bob, Laura, Walter and Paul. Comfort all who mourn with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Oh.
come, thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Desire of nations mind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O oh.